just gotten back in the building so I missed all of that um, and slowly found out about the tragedy that had happened. We average about 22 dogs in training at once um, and that has increased a little bit since it was at Jen's house, uh, probably about five or six dogs. She still had a lot of dogs at her house. Um, we have touched over a hundred thousand lives through our other programs that we have and I'm going to explain that, uh, what we have as we um, train our dogs. So we serve our state, but we are also represented internationally. Uh, we are accredited by Assistance Dogs International, and our director serves on the board of that. And we are also, our director is also a member of Animal Assisted Intervention International. 
And that is a program that we use during training of our dogs to touch over 100,000 lives. So, how do our dogs get trained? Uh, they spend two years at our facility and they are trained by, a certi by certified instructors. We have one full-time instructor, we have one part-time apprentice trainer in addition to our di executive director who's also a trained um, trainer. And we have um, several part-time um, fosters who have gotten into helping us with the, with the basic obedience training as well. The first year of a puppy's life is a lot of obedience training. They don't get into the things that you'll see um, Nikki doing today until their second year. So a lot of our fosters who have been with our program for eight years or so are coming in to help us um, with that, that first year training. We also have a program called Prison Pals. Uh, inmates at Kershaw Correctional train our dogs. If they stay with our program for two years, they can earn an apprentice uh, trainer certificate so that when they get out, they have a skill, they have a job. We have um, three guys who have earned that certification. Um, as a matter of fact, we're looking at partnering with another um, prison in this area and Jen was supposed to have that, she was supposed to come today and she was also supposed to have that meeting. It's a women's institution. Um, I'm not from I'm not either. I'm not, I'm not either. And it loses me which one. Um, I want to say it's near Lander. Lee, is it Lee? No, it would be Lee. It loses me right now which one it is. But anyway, so we are, ex we are expanding um, and we're going to have one up this way. Our weekend fosters are also like I said, very important to our program. They're not just handed dogs to take home for the weekend, they're trained. And they go through a, an initial training session and then they have to stay on Friday afternoons when they come to pick up the dogs. They stay for about an hour and a half training session then as well. And so um, we, we had to go through a lot. If you stay with the program and are faithful as a foster, you can earn your public access, which I did um, last December. So now I'm able to, um, to take my foster places on the weekends um, during, and, and help with the obedience training. Um, our animal assisted intervention programs, in addition to prison pals, are also school pals. We go to a school once a month in the afternoons from 3 to 5 and we work with their Zubots program, the 6th graders. We have about 60 6th graders per year that we work with. They learn basic obedience training. They learn the importance of service animals um, to others and how they assist others in their, in their lives and make others independent. Um, we have Summer Pals, which is a Summer Pals camp. It is for kids with disabilities and kids without. We like to integrate the two. Um, I've watched those camps and I've participated in their camps. They're fantastic. And we also have pedopiles at USC where we take our dogs' capes off and let them be therapy pets. We go during exam time. We actually go about once a month now. Um, and we go to the Health and Wellness Center there at USC. Um, and we have reading pals where our dogs are very attentive listeners um, to children who are learning to read. So, yeah, these are just examples. I went ahead and told you about some of our programs. Uh, I will mention summer piles. At the end, the last day of camp, we take them to the airport, and they get to try out everything that they've learned in camp. They um, go through the uh, check security, and they have to use all the cues that they learned in camp that week to get that dog safely through security. Uh, they also have to know that the um, security guard cannot, like, handle the dog. So uh, they have to learn all of that and go, and go through security. So it's, it's pretty, it's fun, it's a lot of fun. Um, I went with them this past summer. Well, our weekend fosters, uh, this was at graduation last year. Chief, I'm going to fun in that one. <laughs> this guy. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I was looking for a picture. <laughs> um, 
So we have, in addition to our full service dogs who service people with um, physical disabilities, autism, and PTSD, we also have uh, a facility <coughs> dog program. And Chief is a facility dog slash ministry dog um, with, um, with Skeeter in, green, in this area. Um, he's also a, a spokesperson for PALS. Resting right now, but you are a spokesperson. <laughs> um, and um, I've seen Chief interact with the kids in Skeeter's program, and it is truly amazing. Um, you want to share just a, a second of what Chief, mm -hmm. some of the things that Chief does? <laughs> well, I did want to start by saying I think the Greenville Hospital System has three facilities, okay. and one of them sometimes works for Mickey. Okay. Uh, Wonderful. With the marching arms. The, the, not just a well-trained dog, the one that is certified, uh, does amazing things. Uh, Chief, um, I think there are probably two main places where we work together. Young Life Capernaum is what Young Life, if you know Young Life, uh, you might not know that there's a, a program for young folks with disabilities, and he goes with me everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Provides comfort uh, it, when we're working together like that. It's not really open doors and like the, the things that we can do. We just providing uh, uh, just a, a, a friendly face. One uh, thing that a wagging tail. Yeah, one thing that Chief is so good at is one thing that Skeeter encourages through his program is for the kids to participate with him to get active and adaptive swimming, adaptive tennis, um, all kind of lake activities. Chief loves to swim, and he loves a tennis ball, and so he is. Put it back in the basket. He is incredibly helpful in getting the kids to participate in those activities. Um, because we practice just, on Thursdays. In fact, that's where I'm supposed to be right now. Yeah, and, and Chief <laughs> learned to swim at my house. I'm going to say, by the way. And, so. uh, and what Roger C. Peak says a water skiing program that we'd like to go to at Lake Bowen. And you know how when you get in the tub and you stay there a long time, your hands look like crumbs? His whole body looks like Yes, he would. he would. He would stay in there the whole time. So, yeah. But we are grateful to have uh, Chief and, and Skeeter in the area. Uh, this is Chiver. Chiver is Chief's brother. And he is a facility dog at Palmetto Health Children's Outpatient and Specialty Therapy Clinic in Columbia. Very similar probably to what you were talking about, the dogs in the Greenville Hospital. Um, Chira assists um, the physical therapist in, in therapy. Um, if the child is learning to stand up, sit down, uh, she uses Chira for the child to balance. If the child is practicing going upstairs, again, Chira is used for balance. Uh, I watched um, the, the build the physical, the throwing the ball, Chira goes and gets it and brings it back. And um, Chira is also used for speech therapy. Um, they take the cape off help uh, put the cape back on. The child talks about how you brush Jiver's teeth. And um, he's good motivation for children who just really don't want to be there in therapy. Um, <laughs> he can get some children to, to work for the therapist, whereas the therapist, as sweet as she is, um, well, she's a physical therapist. Yeah, she's a physical but, therapist. The question is always, is that uncomfortable? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's do it again. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, and she has, she's just as sweet as she can be and has a heart of gold, but sometimes Chiger takes over. Um, this is also one of our clients. Um, this is Sammy, Team Sammy. And um, they are at Furman University as a and, um Sandy's uh, partner is a sophomore. Uh, she has connective tissue disease and a lot of pain with it. Uh, Sandy gets things for her so it can limit her movement. Um, he also, as you can see, he has a, um, a brace on him. She does walk holding on to him. Most of the time she's okay. She doesn't have to depend on him that much for balance, but it's there just in case she needs it. Um, because with her condition, something could pop out of joint at any time. And before she went to Furman, she was at East Side High School. Yes. So you have a connection there. You have. Yeah. Um, this is um, another one of our mobility teams. And actually, I put this in there to show you that we actually have had a mobility successor dog. Uh, this was uh, Casper. Casper was Dory's third dog. 
Um, so she understands the importance and the benefit um, to uh, the service dogs with her um, lifestyle. It's made her so independent. She works for Able, South Carolina, and um, travels all over the place. Uh, goes to Washington, California, and uh, she now has Shaq, and Shaq is also Chief's brother, uh, and Shiver's <laughs> brother, um, and he's just remarkable. Um, I was going to show you a little bit of what um, Shaq uh, would do for her, and I was going to use um, Nikki to do that. Nikki, Nikki, all right, you ready to go to work? All right. So, um, if you can see, um, Nikki, all right. Leash. Yes, good leash, thank you. So he picks up his leash and gives it to me. Of course, he could pick up anything. Um, Nikki, up, get it. Yes, good. Nikki. Drop. Good boy. And so he can go retrieve anything uh, for her that she needs. Um, and he can also, just in case you can't get up or get it, like Dory has limited use of her hands. So, get it. Chief, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, I know you do, baby. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good boy. So he can actually get up on her and drop it in her lap so that she doesn't have to reach out for it. So, yes. Um, also, another thing that um, that he does is he helps her. <laughs> sorry, but not yet. Um, he helps her get her clothes uh, off. Um, her shoes, pants, sweater, all of it. He does it. He does it all. And one of the ways he does is through a command called um, tug. Nikki, tug. Hold. Hold, good. Hold. All right. Good. So I won't make him keep tugging, but that's one of the ways he does it. And so he does it, like I said, shoes, socks, anything she needs. I'm sorry. Ah, all right. Good boy. Um, and so also um, light switches. Um, Dory not only can't reach the light switch, but it's difficult with her hands. So, nudge. Yes, good nudge. And of course, we put it up higher and higher um, for him. And then finally, doors, uh, elevators, things like that. Nikki, target. Yes, good one to target. And so we use target. Also, a lot of our um, I know. A lot of our clients will take medications, and so it's very important we've taught the dogs um, not to eat it. Uh, leave it. I'll put it up here so you can see that if it was on the floor. Leave it. Good. Leave it. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. And so they don't touch things that are on the floor. I know one fellow that had a hard time with that. <laughs> Still does. <laughs> Um, and so, uh, yeah, so that's just some of the ways that they've helped them, our mobility. Right. Oh, good. Yes. Okay. Um, so we also have our autism teams, and we actually had at 1.3, one young man is now 21, and his dog has retired, and so she is now just a pet. Um, and that is one question that we have too, is what happens to the dog when they retire? They can stay in the home. And nine times out of 10, the family wants to keep the dog as a pet. And so as long as they're able to, as a matter of fact, Dory, who has Shaq now, Casper lives with them. And he rolls over and goes back to sleep every morning while Shaq goes to work <laughs> with um, Dory, and does not mind at all. Um, she still keeps some special things that just Casper does for her. Um, and that's enough. He doesn't need any more. He's got his 401k and he's happy. Uh, but anyway, these are our autism teams. Um, the team on the on the left, the young girl, they have been partnered for about a year. They were partnered at the same time as Skeeter was. And uh, literally, uh, completely life-changing. Um, the little girl now sleeps in her own bed with her dog. She had never done that before. She. Um, didn't that sleep. Before they left training. We get we, we get to come in and be trained for two weeks. Right. She came with her mother, her grandmother, and an aunt from Raleigh because that's what it took to keep her safe and in control. Mm -hmm. and about three nights from the end, I remember Jenny 
the mother comes in and says, last night Abby, the dog, hopped in bed, and Maya, my daughter, hopped in bed with Abby, and I slept in a bed by myself for the first time in 12 years. Yeah. Yeah. This has been a single mother and uh, emergency room nurse, uh, and just, uh, that has been an amazing thing. One of the things, um, like she reported back to us too, soon after they got back home, I made my first grocery shopping trip and I got all the way through the grocery store. And I just couldn't imagine that. I mean, you know, I raised a child and I just couldn't imagine going to not being able to go do that as I need to. Um, Jenny loves to go to the gym and work out and of course she wants to take Maya with her and she wasn't able to do that now that Abby goes too and Maya's perfectly happy and Abby's able to take care of Maya while Jenny does that and I think they've even been working out a little bit too. So, um, Our other team is in the Charleston area and there has been a good bit of surgery involved uh, with that situation and that family and so um, Joyce has been um, a, a blessing for that as well. Joyce does not go to school with um, with her her partner. However, the teacher has the parent on speed dial, and if Joyce is needed, she's there in ten minutes. So that has been a huge blessing as well, and it's gotten to be less and less. Um, that that Joyce is needed there, you know, during the day. But she can she can be at the school in a few minutes with Joyce if she needs to be. Um, this is um, Team Daisy, and Daisy is headed to Oxford. <laughs> um, she's going in just a couple weeks, um, so we are just absolutely thrilled. Four years ago, Daisy and her partner were matched. Her partner had been homeschooled. He is brilliant, as you can see. He's a Rhodes Scholar. He just graduated in May from USC. Um, he is headed to Oxford to study. You can hardly stand up for the court. Yeah. <laughs> I think they paid him to go to school. I think so. <laughs> um, but he has autism, he has cerebral palsy, and has a metabolic disorder. And so when I first met him, I just thought that he was studious because he had a backpack and I thought, well, he is really smart, you know. So, But in that backpack is a life-saving formula and there's a tube that goes into his stomach and Daisy alerts him in that tube kinks and there's a little beeper noise that goes off and Jory cannot hear it. Uh, part of the autism, he just can't hear it. And so Daisy will nudge the backpack and nudge him when it starts beeping. Um, he also is, is good, you know, he doesn't want to walk with a cane at 21, 22 years of age. And so Daisy's also good for balance and support um, and also very helpful with his autism. Jory was homeschooled and when he decided to go to USC and was accepted, his mama said, I'm not sure that they're going to let me come sit in classes with you. I really don't know what we're going to do. And um, Daisy has just opened the doors in society for Jory because people can focus on Daisy and they'll have to focus on Jory and it makes him more comfortable. And so he has, just through Daisy, just blossomed. Um, I mean, he speaks, he's a public spokesperson for us now. Um, any chance he got, um, he comes and, and, and helps us. And he would barely look you in the eye four years ago. So. Well, it's non-verbal for child that's what I was told. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I do know that it first started, he first started communicating with a bird. And that's when, as young, as a young boy, and that's how his mama knew that an animal might someday be able to bring him out of this. Uh, our latest placement happened in April of this year, and it's at Lake Carolina Elementary in Columbia, and it's Team Ross. And Ross is in a school, uh, in a classroom for uh, four-year-olds and five-year-olds with autism. And he is just rocking it there. We're so proud of him. So he, has, he just got to work like a month before school was out. And so this has been his first uh, full-time back. He got to start school this year and meet all the kids on the same day that they met their teacher. And uh, he's, he's been doing fantastic. He wears a little, uh, some of those kids are nonverbal, but they know pictures. He wears a little uh, 
backpack sign and they can pick the picture out and show the teacher they need the bathroom or whatever and he wears that around as well as a lot of other things that he does um, we also serve um, we do uh, uh, mobility autism and PTSD and we also serve our military and first responders this is team cookie they were placed last October um, and uh, team RC and RC is going on about seven years now I believe and um, she has saved that young man's life uh, he will tell you if it wasn't for RC you wouldn't be talking to me you'd be talking about me and he's serious well, well, the other fellow was well on his way to be in one of the 22 a day that uh, yeah. the military is not the only way you get to uh, be a PTSD person no no I got that one too you got that one too I think yeah. I did I think I did. If not, I'll, I'll go back and mention that. Nikki, you want to show some of that? All right. So, uh, as far as autism and PTSD goes, we want to show you some of those behaviors that they can do as well. So, everything that I showed you up to now is all um, um, physical disabilities. This is some that would be more um, for um, PTSD and autism. Nikki, touch. Nikki, hug. He already knew what was coming. <laughs> okay, go away. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so it doesn't look like much, but he's a good size and he's very comforting. And so that would be a hug. That would be one thing that they can use. They're also trained to do them on the floor. So that if the child, I know, you can do it too. <laughs> I forgot my little goodie bag. Oh, you did? It's in the way. And I have Nikki's special food. So mm -hmm. um, there's a reason Nikki has not been placed. Um, he has kidney disease. And so he is our program dog until he can no longer. So I'm sure you're probably wondering with a dog this talented, why is he not out working? He has kidney disease. So. All right. So Nikki, touch it. It's good touch. That's a good one. Oh, yes. Nikki, rest. Nikki, rest. Yes, good rest. And so what he would do is he would rest um, on uh, a soldier or a veteran who may be experiencing anxiety. And like I said, he would stay that way until the soldier asked him to leave, until the veteran asked him to leave. He would stay that way. He can also do that with autism. Um, as I was saying before um, I was talking to Chief, Nikki, all right. Um, they're trying to do it on the floor as well. So, like, if a child was um, having a difficult time and crying, breakdown, they could do a, they could sit on the child, and they can do a rest on the child as well. As a matter of fact, when Abby was paired with Maya, Abby went over and put her head in her lap just like this, and that's how we knew. I mean, we did, we just knew. It. Abby picked her. She did. Maya, we didn't, we didn't. Abby went over and just did this. Good rest, Nikki. That's a good boy. You got one more. You think you can do the other one? All right. Good boy. And so the other one, and I do have short son because um, he's a big boy. But the other one is, um, all right, Nikki. Nikki, all right. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> all right, Nikki. Nikki. Lean. Uh-uh. Nikki. Lean. Lean. Yes, good. Lean. And then rest. And so you would know, I know. <laughs> I, I think we have a necessary potty stock. <laughs> so we, um, he would do this, and you would never know that he was actually comforting his, um, his hand. All right. So those are our autism and our PTSD. Uh, finally, uh, to wrap all this up, um, we um, are starting a new pilot program, and I passed it out. Uh, so, if you know of anyone, uh, yes. if you know of anyone who is a veteran and they have not gone through, uh, they have a service dog, self-trained, or maybe it's been trained through another organization but it's not through, the program is not through ADI, Assistance Dog International. To our knowledge, Kyle's is the only one in the state of South Carolina that is ADI accredited. Um, veterans need the ADI accreditation in order to get on military bases, 
and on VA hospitals. They do not allow service dogs on without the ADI accreditation. So, as a result of that, PALS has seen a need for this, and we get calls all the time. Do you, will you train our dogs? Will you train our dogs? So, we have received a grant from the Dorothy Smith Foundation, and we are going to be doing a program called uh, Veteran PALS. And what can happen is, veterans can bring their dog that passes the canine good citizenship test. It has to have passed that. They have to have been diagnosed with PTSD in need of a service dog, and we will train that team together. Um, this is a pilot program. We're starting it in January, and so we are filtering and interviewing people <coughs> now. Um, we have a lady who um, does the um, canine good citizen evaluation and test. She's going to be working with us um, to select folks who feel like candidates for that program. Um, the, you know, the dog has to have passed the canine good citizenship test. They can already be service dogs trained somewhere else or self-trained, um, and we will give them that accreditation that they need. So, yeah, we're excited about it. We also have um, PALS Patriots. We used to do this and um, stopped because we lost our connection with Fort Jackson and there was no way to get the, um, the, the participants for the class. But we've started it back up. We're partnering with Pathways, which is an equine counseling center in Columbia, and the Big Red Barn Retreat, which is also a nonprofit that services veterans and their families. Um, they service through uh, psychotherapy, they do yoga classes, and also equine therapy. And so we're gonna, we're doing this program. We don't have funding for it. We're doing it and praying um, because we just feel like it's important. We just feel like it's something that is that is needed. So we are looking for funding for PALS Patriots. Our end of it will be about ten thousand, and um, the other big red barn retreat is paying the other ten thousand. And then finally, people always ask us, what happens to the dogs that don't make it? Because for every dog that gets trained, two or three could be released from the program. And so we have um, two options. We actually have three more than that, but two of the programs. One is called Pets with a Purpose, and that is for dogs that get very well trained. They're within 18 months of age, close to being placed. Uh, Callie was that dog. She was our dream girl. We thought she was going places. She went in the calisters and growled. <laughs> she wouldn't go in the door of the vet's office without making a stink. So, um, Callie's been placed uh, with a family and she helps out in the home. And she's a huge help. She's a great retriever um, and she can retrieve and get any kind of dropped items that their daughter needs her to. Um, and she's, but she doesn't go outside the home because she just couldn't break those bad habits. Um, and then we have another one called Veterans Important Pals, and um, that's where a dog is placed with a veteran um, in the home. Uh, they don't go outside. Cole loves birds, squirrels, and those types of things <laughs> way too much. And so uh, Cole serves a lady who was in the military. She was actually a general, and um, she has a hearing loss. And so Cole can tell her when there's somebody at the door, when the phone's ringing, she doesn't hear a lot of that. And so he, he barks and tells her that. He loves to bark. <laughs> so um, Pals dogs typically can't bark and, and be service dogs. Um, we also had a fantastic experience in the Greenville area this time of uh, February of last year. Uh, we were Hillcrest High School's um, chosen nonprofit for their spirit week. It raised over $100,000 for us. And we are so incredibly grateful to the Greenville community and to that school and to the people that participated and helped us with that program. We we're just beside ourselves. Yeah. Um, that is a wonderful, that Spirit Week is a wonderful, wonderful thing that Greenville County School District does. And I just, I mean, I was a teacher for 28 years and I wish our school district had made us do something like that. It's fantastic. A great philanthropy and teaching the children at a young age to give back. 
So um, we do have um, a lot of support in the Greenville area, and we are grateful for it. And we are trying, I said, we don't just serve Columbia. We serve the entire state of South Carolina, as well as the uh, southern part of North Carolina and the eastern part of Georgia. Um, I have the Greenville Community Foundation has just provided us with a bus, mm. which we are thrilled about. Uh, we're trying to get our decals on it. We're going to put the, um, some other decals on it, too, for sponsors. We have about 100 donors, 100 or more donors in the Greenville area. Uh, we have several volunteers. We have Team Chief in the area. We have several volunteers. We have one lady in the Greenville area that does all of our graphic design. She created our PALS logo. So um, we also have the young adult author, Sherry Levy, uh, who I still claim as Greenville, even though she has just moved to the, the Beaufort area. And um, she, as a matter of fact, I was talking to her on the way up here. And she is an uh, upstate parent, an online magazine is publishing an article about her and her latest book, which her books are based on PALS. And um, so she was asking me for some pictures to put in there. So we definitely have a strong presence in the Greenville area, and we are so grateful um, for it because we're trying our best to serve South Carolina and meet the needs of those. And I think that's it. I tried to be fast. Those are all of our cues. <laughs> um, any questions? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to say I was I've lived my whole life with Asperger's and cerebral palsy. I have always considered myself very fortunate that I have not needed to be in a wheelchair or on crutches or have to have a service animal. But for all the ones that do need those, I am very happy that your company has these animals to provide for them and help them. I'm thrilled to. I feel like making a difference. Yes. How do individuals go about getting the service? Through PALS. Um, there's an, um, we have our website, www.pals.org. It's really easy. And uh, when you go on the right, you'll see a little menu circle. You click down and it says apply. And then you just follow the links and you'll either apply for mobility, autism, or PTSD, or facility. Um, and yeah, just go through the application process and it's all online how you do it. And it's not like joining the Baptist church and just walking down front. <laughs> uh, they're going to check you out. But your need with dog's ability to help you, uh, it took me a little while to get cheap just because they wanted the right dog for what I did. How much does it cost to train a dog over two years? Over $30,000. It cost us. Um, yeah. And is there a cost for families? 5000 and that's the team training fee, um, which from what I have found so far, we are the cheapest out of everything I've seen, what I've looked at. Um, it's the 5000 team training fee, and one of the reasons for that is during team training, our trainers don't do anything else. That's all they do. As a matter of fact, we're starting team training next week. We have two we're placing. We're placing a mobility dog in the Charleston area and a PTSD dog with a veteran uh, from Columbia. So we will have three official graduates for this year uh, in December. And it's not a piece of cake to go down there for two weeks. I mean, it's hard work. It is hard work. Is there, no, what, no, eight no. to five every day? Yeah. Um,